This tutorial describes how to set up a circuit envelope simulation using SimRF. As an example, we will use a digital communication system representing a wireless link operating around 2.5 GHz. In this model, we have a baseband transmitter and receiver and we want to take into account the impact of an RF direct conversion receiver on the overall system performance and estimate the BER and quality of the received constellation. For this video, we've built a model of the RF receiver and we are going to explain the simple steps required to simulate it. We will be assuming basic knowledge of RF theory and some experience with Simulink. This model uses components from the SimRF circuit envelope library. In the folder elements, you will find behavioral models of amplifiers, mixers, S parameters, as well as lumped components such as capacitors, inductors, and resistors. In the direct conversion receiver model, the low noise amplifier is characterized by a certain gain, noise figure, and finite IP3. Similar parameters can also be set for mixers. In this case, the mixers also introduce even order nonlinearity specified by finite IP2. This will cause DC offset at the output of the mixer. We use a resistor to take into account the leakage between the local oscillator and RF ports. In general, the power of the local oscillator signal is larger than the power of the RF signal and therefore any coupling between the two ports might cause leakage that will result again in DC offset at the output of the mixer. This behavioral model of the direct conversion receiver allows us to estimate the impact of phenomena such as spectral regrowth, DC offset and noise on the overall system performance. You might have noticed that the Simulink signals in this model are described with an arrow and this is because they indicate a unidirectional flow of information. Loading effects are not taken into account in Simulink and a Simulink signal does not have a physical property. It might represent a voltage, temperature or power. When you connect together blocks from the circuit envelope library, you will see that the look and feel of the signals is different. This is because within the circuit envelope diagram, signals are treated in the domain of voltages and currents. So we have two different domains and we need gateways to communicate between Simulink and the physical domain of SimRF. You can find these gateways in the SimRF circuit envelope library under the folder Utilities. From here, let us drag and drop input and output blocks into our receiver model. When you double click on the input block, you can specify how the Simulink signal is interpreted. In this case, the input port will generate a normalized voltage with source impedance of 50 ohms. We are also going to specify that the Simulink signal represents the modulation around a central frequency called a carrier. The variable FCRF represents the carrier frequency and is defined in the MATLAB workspace with a value of 2.45 GHz. Now, this is the same frequency specified for the local oscillator as we are modeling a receiver that performs a down conversion to DC in a single stage. The output of the mixer will consist of two envelopes, one centered around 2 times FCRF and one centered around 0 Hz or DC. As we are interested in the down conversion operation, this is the carrier that we selected the output port. Finally, we simply duplicate the port on the quadrature branch. Next, we need a configuration block to set up the general parameters for the circuit envelope solver. We can drag and drop this block from the utilities library and connect it to any node. All circuit envelope diagrams need a configuration block in order to specify three settings for the circuit envelope simulation. The fundamental frequencies, the maximum harmonic order, and the simulation step size. As a starting point, it is recommended that the checkbox automatically select fundamental tones and harmonic order be enabled. After updating the diagram, the circuit envelope solver will automatically determine the fundamental tones from the input ports in the circuit envelope sources and will choose a conservative harmonic order. This choice provides correct simulation results. If you need to speed up simulation, you can trim and reduce the harmonic order depending on the power of the signals and also the amount of nonlinearity in your system. Another important parameter to be set by the configuration block is the simulation step size. It is recommended that you set the step size to the same value as the sample time of the Simulink input signals as shown in this example. These variables are again defined in the MATLAB workspace.
The simulation step size should be small enough to capture the bandwidth of the modulation of the signals. It does not have to be small enough to capture the absolute maximum frequency of the signal. This allows the circuit envelope solver to simulate RF signals faster than traditional transient solvers. In this example, the simulation step size of 125 nanoseconds corresponds to a simulation bandwidth of 8 MHz, which is much smaller than the carrier frequency. After these few steps, we are now ready to run the simulation. From the results, we see that the received signal is amplified and the noise flow is slightly higher. Spectral regrowth is marginal, the constellation is clean and the BER is essentially zero. Under these conditions, the receiver achieves good results. But what happens if we take into account the presence of a blocker signal? A blocker is a signal that is close in frequency to our desired signal but has much higher power. A blocker is hard to filter out and might cause the RF receiver to saturate. In this example, inside the baseband transmitter, the modulations of the RF signal and of the blocker are combined. At each point in time, the SIMRF input port receives two samples. The first describing the modulation of the RF signal centered around FCRF and the second describing the modulation of the blocker centered around FCBL. Once again, FCBL is a variable defined in the MATLAB workspace and as you can see, it is only 3 MHz away from FCRF. In the simulation setup and in the model, nothing else changes. The circuit envelope solver will automatically find the new fundamental tone and determine a conservative harmonic order. The simulation step size remains the same as it is commensurate to the envelope and not to the carriers. If we now run the simulation, we can inspect the impact of the blocker that almost masks the desired signal. The higher power of the blocker will excite the nonlinearity of the receiver. The output signal is now affected by in-band spectral regrowth and by DC offset as can be seen from the spectrum and the received constellation. The results of this simulation tell us that we need an algorithm for DC offset correction. After applying a simple digital signal processing algorithm and running the simulation, we are able to center the constellation back around zero as well as reduce the BER. In this video, we have seen how you can set up a multi-carrier circuit envelope simulation in SIMRF, refine the specifications of the RF front end and compensate the RF impairments at the system level.